So we'll call the meeting to order, 602. First on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Is there anything that needs to be amended or included? I, we need to discuss the, um, you know, year and report that review, uh, that uh, document that I created for both myself and the select board. So sure. maybe, maybe we could do that, uh, you know, around we, when we do the town meeting stuff. I sent it to everyone. I got some feedback from Dave about a couple of mistakes that I fixed and, um, but we should sure. still talk about it. Yeah, that's fine. That, we'll just include that into the yeah. town yeah. meeting stuff, okay? Yeah. I have a quick topic to discuss, but I think we can do it under other business and don't need to add it to the agenda. Just okay. Okay. I'll just write, uh, Lindley here just to remind myself. All right. And then the, um, the executive session pieces I'd like to take off the agenda for the, this evening. So I haven't, um, haven't been able to uh, make contact with the, the chair of the Royalton board as of now. So I <clears throat> just felt it would be, uh, we, him and I need to talk before we, before we go through this piece of it. Um, I wouldn't want to go through this and without getting their opinion. So, uh, so we'll probably likely as we'll have it on the next meeting. So we're going to remove the Casella piece only, but leave the other probable possible civil litigation. We'll leave that one in. So we still have one more thing. That executive session was a two parter. Right. Yeah. So we'll just take out the Casella piece and we'll add it back in, in two weeks. That's great. It sounds like Mo does not want to do that, Chris. Well, we can put it off till next year if you want. I don't care. Okay, Well, I, I, mean. I think the only thing I just I think the only thing I'm just kind of worried about is is us talking about the matter before the other board. It's in executive session. Nobody knows about it. I don't know. I mean, I guess That's fine. Just, forget it. just forget it, Chris. Just forget it. We'll we'll do it sometime next year. Well, we got a long year. It's only the eleventh day of the year, so we got a long time to go. But if if any, of the, I mean, if the board members would like to move forward with the discussion tonight on that, I you know, like. Well, we can at least talk about what you know what the details are, not necessarily make any decisions or anything, but just get some background uh, information. Like would be will be helpful. Yeah, I agree. It doesn't it doesn't hurt to <laughs> talk about it knowing that we're not going to make any decisions and that you still want to talk to the Royalton Board Chair. Fine. All right. We'll just keep it there. All right, anything further? I move we accept the agenda as amended. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And this evening we don't have any appointments, so we'll open it right directly up to public comment. So that, um, if anybody's on for, like to bring up anything that's not on the meeting agenda for this evening, now's the time to do it. You can either unmute or um, or you could type a question or raise your hand in the chat section there. Okay, well hearing none, we'll, uh, we'll move on. Uh, so first up is uh, just the yearly adoption of the highway mileage. So in your packet, we have the certified highway mileage for town of Bethel for 2021. Anything that you need to add to that, Therese? So 
Sorry, I was muted. Well, I'll put it on the clipboard at the back door of the office so you guys will have to come in and sign it because it does require select board signatures. Yeah. Well, for anybody that doesn't know that the highway mileage is just us certifying that these are the miles of, of certain class uh, roads that we have here in Bethel uh, lines up our our funding that we have through the state as well as our maintenance. Um, there's, no, there's no change from previous year? No, sir. No. No change. So unless anybody has any objections or any comments, I would entertain a motion to adopt the certificate of highway mileage for 2021 as, as it's presented. No more Mo. It was Mo and Paul. Okay. So Mo, Mo moved it, Paul, second? No. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Ready? That one's always a really tough one every year to go through. <laughs> and that's why you'll for any anybody you know um, that's on that typically is not part of the meetings uh, year round this time of year you know right before or right after the beginning of the year there's a lot of just um, typical annual adoptions that the town runs through um, and then as soon as town meeting day happens usually we have another round of uh, you know, uh, appointments and things like that, um, that are done at that point. So usually the first couple of months of every year is really just going through the yearly adoptions, which we have, I don't know, tens or hundreds of them to do. So, um, so we do a few every meeting. Um, and then we had, uh, the next couple we had, um, I don't think any of these really have changed other than we sent formally. Uh, accepted the resignation or appointment. So just to clean up our bookkeeping here, we had the official resignation of Brad Morel Cor Cornelius as a lister. Um, he was a gentleman that was uh, brought on last time, but really hasn't taken the position. So um, it's just a matter of accepting the resignation. Yeah, he never took the oath of office but it's nice to have it in the record book since he was elected at town meeting. Move to accept resignation. Second. Hey, all in favor? Mm -hmm. Aye. Aye. Alrighty. And the second was the appointment of Eric Benson to the planning commission. Um, Eric had moved the um, DRB to planning commission. Um, He's doing both. Yeah, so like a month ago, so it's just really just kind of bookkeeping on that as well. Um, the motion to appoint Eric Benson to the Planning Commission. Uh, is that a yearly, it's, or in this case, is this a temporary position or is this permanent? It's normally three years, but he said he's only going to do it for a year. So it's, okay. I would just move to a plan, point him for one year. Okay, so, so the motion to appoint Eric Benson for the Planning Commission is just a one-year term. So, so moved. Second. Okay, move by Mo, second by Paul. Yep. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Eric knows Eric knows about this, right? <laughs> <laughs> he's been he's the chair of the planning. <laughs> he's the chair, and then I realized that he's we, never, he do we need me. a do we need a letter of interest. <laughs> now, he, said, he told me, he said, you know, Therese, I the board, he goes, I you know, I'm the chair and the board's never appointed me. I said, Oh, and he'd forgotten to send a letter. And I said, it doesn't matter. You're already doing it. So I said, it's fine. And he meant to send a letter. But honestly, we've been too busy working on the zoning regulations. We've met a few times. And that was as far as we got. Right. So he's being very gracious and doing it. It's very helpful. Our planning commission meetings are, we're meeting twice a month. And then he and I are also meeting so that we can, because via Zoom, it's a little more difficult when you're trying to amend zoning regulations. I think meeting in person. So he and I meet and then we look up statutes, questions we had, and then I just drafted three sections to send to him to look over and we'll draft a fourth and then we'll send it to the planning commission. We're trying to you know, make the process a little bit easier. So instead of us trying to parse wordage 
um, that night, you know, we can, um, we'll have some more verbiage to talk about. So. Okay. Any further discussions in regards to the resignation or the appointments? You're none. Oh, hang on. I got a person waiting. I didn't realize. Yeah, Teresa had us all uh, locked out earlier. I didn't mean to either. <laughs> I try not to to do that, but obviously this time. Well, it was the first time it ever did that. So when I signed in, I was like, oh, that's kind of weird. And yeah, me too. I didn't know if it was just a. I hadn't signed in yet. So program had, or. No, I had. Or something people. happened to you or. I had a few people waiting, so. Oh. <laughs> you weren't alone. Uh, next up is the uh, to go over the town meeting day warning, um, as well as the remote uh, informational hearing notices and agendas. Yeah, it's a lot this time. Um, so I drafted the warning, and there is a meet meeting on or a webinar with VLCT. I think it's on Wednesday or Thursday, which I'm going. I've signed up for, which I am going to take the, mm -hmm. just to dot all my eyes, cross all my T's. But the good news is, since this has your signatures on the second page, I'll have you sign the warrant when you come in to sign the highway mileage certificate. And if there's any minor changes to the warning, I'll let you know. But frankly, there shouldn't be. I, I think it should be good. But I, I guess the only question I had with just looking at the warning itself was, could you just take me through briefly on on the listers and where each term stands with those, because I got a little confused sure. with, uh, I understood the lister for three year term, which is the seat that's open. I got a little confused when I saw the lister one for two years that expires next year. Well, that's the balance of um, somebody else's seat at this point. I think it was, uh, I don't have my town report with me. I think it was Roberta's because Louise ran her own term, and I think that's what it was. I think that there was a balance of Roberta's term, because if there was Roberta, Louise, and Jim, so maybe it's either Jim or Roberta's. It's a balance of a term, because listers are three years, and they're staggered, and Judy got elected last year. Um, so did Brad, supposedly. So Judy got in last year and Brad. So this would be the balance of somebody else's term. But we all know that Louise is going to run and then she's going to retire July 1st. So we're, we know we're going to be looking for come, you know, we're going to be looking for a couple of listers. We did hire, you hired M Mimi Burstein and she, but she isn't just a, to work in the office for 10 hours a month. So, um, I think we're going to see what we have come July and it will make, you know, an ad in the paper and this and that. But if we don't have somebody else, we're going to have to look at the assessor piece. And, but really, you know, I'll have a conversation with Judy Brigham once Louise retires and see what Judy's feelings are. Because this oh. really has to be somebody who's committed to, um, you know, it, it's a lot of education piece. It's helpful if you have specific backgrounds. Um, you know, but right now we have nobody running and I prefer that, you know, unless somebody really wants to do the job and do the training, they shouldn't run. So Louise would run for that two year. Yeah. Position. Yeah. But she's going to retire in July, <clears throat> but Lindley had her hand up. Yeah. So it's sort of along the lines of what you were just saying, I'm just curious. Um, and this maybe is what you're going to learn at the VLCT webinar, but, um, we have to sort of assume that we're going to get some write-ins on Australian ballots. So if nobody's in a position like one of the listers, you know, they're not actually listed on the ballot and we get some write-ins, what happens with that since they do have to be qualified to do the job? How do, how do we handle that situation? Well, they don't have to be qualified to do the job. They, you know, that's a hope that you have. What like happens to be. is, to be honest, I'm not, I haven't been a town clerk for a few years. It used to be that you, there was a minimum write-in per year, um, like 13 or seven or 13, depending on how many were on your list, you're on your um, 
checklist, but to be honest, I don't know what that number is for Bethel or if that's still the same election rule. But whoever wins, if someone does a write in and wins, they're in. There's your lister. And then we'll just be looking for one when Louise retires. But if nobody runs, um, then so be it. Or if um, there's a minimum vote to get and you don't get it, then same thing. But they have to be a Bethel resident, don't they? Of course, yes. Yep. They so have will that be stated on the on the ballot so that you don't get write-ins from no. the towns necessarily? No. No, because no one else is going to be at the polls voting. Only Bethel residents are going to be voting. You would have already gone through the check, you know, the check-in or the check-out if you went to the polls. And if we mailed you your ballot, you're going to know you're only a Bethel resident. She's only going to send you one if you're on the checklist anyways. So <clears throat> no, it doesn't need to be. And if somebody got wrote in who was not a Bethel resident, it'd be a spoiled vote. So it wouldn't count anyways. But okay. um, so we'll just, you know, we'll see. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, hopefully, um, I guess at this point, like I said, it's a conversation with Judy once Louise retires. But if if nobody runs, then I think we'll be looking at the assessor piece, even if we try to, you know, maybe a few towns together and, and we all find somebody and that person gets a full-time job and we could work out benefits and that sort of thing. I think there's a way to do it. What's the deadline for getting on the ballot? January 25th. Okay. It was there was that list in your last packet. I'm pretty sure it was the 25th. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just curious because I, so where I'm going with this is, um, there's somebody who, Bethel resident who had come up as a potential lister, has experience, um, but really it came down to, at the time, what we were offering for compensation just wasn't worth her time. And seeing that we've just sort of done an increase, we've done some increases over the past couple of years, but we've also just done an increase both with Mimi and with Judy. Um, if this person were interested, is, is that sort of a negotiable piece? Um, I think so. I mean, I, you know, you guys are the ones who set the salary, but you could certainly have them email me and I could tell them what Judy's salary was and Mimi's and, and I can also send them that, well, what you had in your last packet, you could also give them that and say, look, here's a list for one, this is what we're paying her. Here's a list for two, here's what we're paying her. So if you fall in these criteria, this is about what you're going to get. Now, if she had many years of experience, he or she, I'm sure the select board would negotiate that salary. Um, but to what extent, I, I, I can't say. Yeah, great, that helps. Sure. So the only thing different on this ballot um, is, you know, we did, I left, I tried to leave it as similar as possible because even though you're voting Australian ballot, at least it's, um, you know, it's what we're used to seeing. The only one on here that's different is number 15, which is what I tried to explain to you before. I apparently did not bring my A game that night because I couldn't get it explained to you. But shall the voters authorize a grace period of three days after the established time for payment during which the collector of delinquent taxes shall not charge a penalty pursuant to 32 BSA? This is because right now, we pay, you have, you're, you have to pay an, or postmark either on that day or you postmark your envelope for the date that it's due. So if Chris mails in his payment and it's postmarked by the 15th, but Lindley brings hers in the day after the 16th, Lindley I'm gonna, is going to be charged, that's right, 1% interest plus 8% penalty. So what happens is we have limitations with our software. What we, if, if we charge, you know, that day, the day after, if we charge everybody the 8% penalty, 1% interest for your May, like we're supposed to, any postmarks that come in after that day, we have to physically reverse the, you know, reverse the interest, reverse the penalty. If that number is high, it takes us a while to do that. So it's, you know, it can be a big waste of time. Our software does not, it's the only way our software works. That's just one of the drawbacks of the software. But it's also difficult because we feel in the office because people, you know, if you have a postmark, sometimes we don't get it for three days or more after the due date. So here's, you know, this Joe 
whoever who just, you know, forgot to make his payment and is a day late, um, you know, we're going to charge him the 9%. But yet, if you had postmarked it from Bethel on the 15th and it doesn't arrive till the 17th or 18th, you're, you know, you make it in. So <clears throat> that's the reason that 15 is on the warning. If you disagree, I can take it off. But I have a comment on that sure. uh, because I have something personal going on with me is uh, I've had uh, people mail me checks, uh, one from uh, Rockberry that I got notified today that I wasn't going to get it. It's been 21 days that it's been gone. It's not here yet. Yeah. I have another one from Waterbury, Vermont that is 12 days old. It's not here yet. Yeah. It depends so, on the three days. That three days is, as far as I'm concerned, you can do it if you want, but what are you going to do if it's 10 days late and yeah. they were lived in Bethel and mailed it? You know that that is just a post office screwing off. Yeah. Well, we can't, you know, we obviously have no jurisdiction over the post office. So if you're going to do it to somebody who actually did something right. Yeah. They well, mailed it on time. Right. So what I'm saying is if the, it depends too, if they mailed it on time, even if I don't get it for 15 days, Dave, if that postmark is the 15th or before, they're good. We're going to waive the interest and penalty. You're all okay. about what the postmark says on the envelope. But well, you're right. We've had, you know, we've had some lag times, serious lag times on receiving money. Well, some of the accounts where you're sending, like Dave does with his bank, you know, he has his bank send a check or somebody has their bank send a check. Even though they live very close by, they, that check may not get cut uh, in this state. It could be cut out west. I've had some come from Nevada. Yeah, you know, some, somebody local, and it just takes forever to get here. But this mail I'm talking about is coming to me from personal accounts, personal checks. No. There, it has nothing to do with a bank bill pay or any of that stuff. If no. it was bill pay, I, I pay my bills bill pay. That, that works. Because I pay all my bills, bill pay, and I pay anybody in the country, and they get it in less than seven days. The thing is, I will say about bill pay with some banks, that's not the case. People have called and said, hey, they took it out of my account. And I said, just because they took it out of your account doesn't mean they mailed it. Because a lot of, if you are using, depending on the bank you use, it's not a local check. It's coming out of a different state. So we have- My checks all come out of Nebraska. Excuse me? All the checks that come on my account come out of Nebraska. So, you know, some of them do take a while. We have had, I know a lot of the bill pays say on their website, I guess, expect basically if you want a check to get somewhere, you need to send it 10 to 14 days prior. But well, anyway, I just, we don't need to get in this conversation. I'm just saying, you put in three days, what are you going to do for that five day or that eight day? Nothing. They're going to get charged the interest or penalty unless... <laughs> And the reason we say three is we've been really monitoring it recently to see how long away from the 15th are we getting postmarks. And the average is one, two, three days. Okay. That's really been, you know, the average one. So after three days, if we get a postmark, it's not the end all be all to reverse the interest or penalty on two. <clears throat> but when you get five, 10, 15, um, it's a two part injury, <clears throat> excuse me, to do. And so, it, you know, it just takes time to, to do it. And we've also had a lot of people, you know, upset who say, but this way we're putting it to the voters. If they don't want it, they'll say no. If they want to give people in three days, they'll say yes. If they don't, they'll say no. Um, but it's yeah. like your choice what goes on in the warning. If you have no, if you don't want people to have the three days, I can remove this. It's not a big deal. It's just something that we were trying, you know, hoping that we were thinking about squaring away. I think, I think we also have had some dates where our taxes are due. So usually we pick the 15th of that quarter. And we've had some times where the 15th might land on a Saturday or a Sunday. In which case we also always, that we accept it on a Monday. Yeah. Type deal. Um, and we do accept it on a Monday because there are, I think there's one date in the next tax year, but I was afraid to change it because I think if you had 15, 16, 14, 15, people are going to get confused. Whereas if it falls on a date and we're not open, then, uh, then we collect it through the next, you know, through Monday. And we put that on Facebook and, you know, 
uh, front porch for them and let people know um, because people have a hard enough time sticking with the 15th of the month if we had to monkey with that. Um, well, actually, I did monkey with it twice. There's two 16s and two 15s, so never mind. I didn't change it last year, but this year I did. There's two 16s and two 15s. I forgot. Last year we didn't, and um, because I didn't want to monkey with it, but I, when I was reading the... <clears throat> The LCT thing, they suggested that we put the accurate dates in. So since they're only a date off, I guess I did this time. But again, yeah, nobody, you know, we'll see. You know, people don't always read their tax bill. Teresa, it was a good question that was asked in the group chat there in regards to um, the job descriptions for some of these uh, positions. Do we have a place on our website where individuals can go and read about whatever the a select board member or a lister or a grand juror or, you know. I'm oh, sorry, I had the chat covered with my open box. <clears throat> do we do we have that information readily available for people that they could go and research? Um, they should be able to go is, on, or... if you go on to the Secretary of State's website, you should be able to um, look at any um, thing that you want. They have, um, they have a list usually under, um, if you go to the Vermont Secretary of State's website, they will, you can go to like town meeting and, and it will tell you, walks you through everything, everything you ever wanted to know about um, elected officials and more. Because there's not necessary, there's not a job description uh, per se. There's a list of select board duties um, and you know what they are responsible for, what they can and cannot do. And that's why you have that massive select board handbook. I was, I was thinking more of the lister position or the positions that come up. Yes, those no, are all on there. If, if you go yep. to the Secretary of State's website, there's a list, um, and it will usually about town meeting, and it will let you know um, what they, what jobs are. You know, the lister is responsible for the grand list, and um, and it will talk a little bit about training and stuff. But uh, if you can't find it, Jesse, just email me, and I'll send you. The, I'll find the link and send it to you. Thanks. Lindley also sent sent me. Send you something for the listers. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. So the the uh, back to the warning. You can see it's the budget. Uh, social service agencies are out or are, are listed. You know, number twelve, not individually, but as a group. Um, White River Valley Ambulance is also listed separately. So this is a pretty standard. You know, there's nothing. No capital funds added, no other questions. So it's, it's a pretty straightforward ballot. I got a question about the, uh, uh, the budget being an Australian ballot. It's either up or down. Yes. Where you know, when we have our regular meeting, it can be adjusted. And we have had some lengthy discussions about two and three and four hundred dollar items. Yes. So are we going to, is that something that's going to come up in the informational meeting Absolutely. Will be adjusted at that time? No, it can't be adjusted. Once it's on, it's on. Um, once the budget's out, it's out be in this case. So no, okay. we can talk about it and defend our position as to why we put it there. Hopefully we educate someone so that they feel more comfortable with the item. Um, but no, it's either up or down. Okay. Um, so... Yeah, which is, you know, which is definitely different for us. Hopefully next year we'll be back to normal. Um, so one of the other things the BLCT was having us do was the Town of Bethel remote public informational hearing notice and agenda. Obviously there's some missing information here that I haven't put in yet about, um, you know, the phone number, the Zoom link, but it's Monday, February 15th at six. We'll do it as part of our, or that's um, our special meeting. And then Monday, February 22nd at six is part of our regular select board meeting. And that's um, the one that you have to have because it has to be 10 days prior to the town meeting. So the 15th, uh, remember that's an addition to our schedule. So this will be the only thing on the agenda. Okay. Um, so, and then I, so we, I went through the agenda. One of the things they had to do was they wanted you to put in was times, but I don't know how long it would take us to discuss these. So I didn't do that. Um, and then we, they had uh, created this informational handout for remote hearings. So this kind of let everybody know. So I think during the meeting, um, what we'll do is people will be able, I'll check my email so people can email me questions. Um, it also, 
they suggest that we give them a phone number to call, um, uh, which is my cell phone number, which I frankly wouldn't want to publish, but um, I, may, I, I may, I think what I'll end up doing probably and maybe is maybe Chris and I will do these, maybe we could do the remote hearings from the office because Chris and I could social distance and I could leave the phone on that night. That way people could call in. Um, I'd also have access to my budget book and, you know, I'd have all that stuff. So that might be easier. Um, but so anyways, uh, so these are all the things that they're suggesting that we put out. So these will, the warnings will go out, the agendas for the public informational hearings, and that will go out and they'll also go out because obviously once the ballot's done, Lisa has to post a sample ballot. So it'll go out. I'm uh, not Lisa, excuse me. Uh, Pam will have to post a sample ballot. <laughs> All that hey, stuff. Therese, what was the date for the special informational meeting? February 15th. 15th. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, and I need to contact Zoom and figure out, you know, if we get more than the usual people, I may have to buy a special license for that day to like, like an expansion pack. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see. But um, the other thing, Dave, you know, I got thinking about is I haven't, as I was just thinking, I've got everything done for the town report. I don't. Um, that budget page that I do that Chris usually reads at the beginning of the year, uh, beginning of town meeting, I need to get that done. And I'll make sure I get that out prior to the meetings too. Dang, I thought I was done with town report, but. Chris, do you have a projected date you're hoping to get town report out to the printers this week, this Friday. Okay, thanks. Yeah. How can you do that if you're not to the 25th for people to apply for some of the positions? Um, because it doesn't matter. We're not publishing the ball, the ballot. Anybody okay. yeah. article on town meeting has to petition by this week, so we'll wait for that. But the I thought that at first too, Mo, and then I went back and read okay. it. Yeah, now that I thought of it, it it's yeah, I was thinking the same thing though. So it's this Thursday. Anybody who wanted a something on the warning had to have it right. in. So that's the wait for this week. But um, so Chris, I'll draft that budget report and get you that to look over. Okay. The other thing I had was the. Um, year in review since the select board decided that we would do one report instead of two. Um, Dave Eddy brought to my attention that I had goofed up some wording under the town, upgrading the town garage in paragraph five. So I fixed that. Um, was there anything else in the year in review that people saw a mistake or want added? Yes. I have a, a, a series of grammatical type things and okay. sentence structure stuff. But, but as far as uh, content, I was wondering if we wanted to put in anything about the ordinances that, that we passed this year. Okay, sure. So there was the trash ordinance. Trash ordinance and the, the uh, dog ordinance. Yep. I can add those. That was it. I'll, I'll I'll drop this off to you tomorrow with the. Yeah, when you sign the other stuff, that's perfect. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. I, and I fixed the town garage stuff. So. Yeah. Okay, I got another question about the. Uh, it's not 2020. It's actually 2021. That the solid waste fees and structure is different, but I am getting hammered by people that said, "How did this come about? I, we didn't know anything about this. We don't know what to do. We don't know how." Do we need to do something more to get the information out that that there's the fee structure is different? How you do it is different. Well, I mean, first of all, it wasn't your decision. It was the transfer station board. They've published it in the newspaper. They've put it on their website, our website, Royalton's website, Facebook, and had signs at the facility. Okay, like, I'm just saying, I, I'm getting people left and right saying. We didn't know this, you know. They, me and my wife went down there to take the recycling, in and we each had to pay three dollars. And we, had, I don't know. They just went on and on and on about all this stuff. I said, well, I explained to them that 
you can go somewhere else. That's right. <laughs> Um, that's no, that's true. And, um, I don't, you know, those are all the key spots that we would normally publish data. So if people aren't reading the paper, aren't looking at the signs that have been posted at the transfer station or looking at our website, Royalton's website, or, uh, we're, you know, we're at, that's. Well, well I guess where I'm going with that, I guess where I'm going with that is whether it's in the town report or where it might be, uh, Bethel and or, well, Bethel and Royalton. There's a lot more people read that town report than read read the paper, mm -hmm. or definitely a lot more people than look at the website. Yeah, it's I have it's only a little blurb, and I don't know what it costs us per page or quarter page or whatever. Maybe we should think about that. I don't know what is in Jen's report for the um, for the town report. I can look, and um, I have no idea what it says, but we can always add. If she doesn't have a fee schedule, we can put a fee schedule in. And put They've been handing that out for over a month. I, I know that. Somebody comes in. The, 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 oh, I, I also know, Dave, that she did send them out. Um, she has sent them out last month, and maybe he's going to do it again this month with any of the billing, the monthly billing. She also sent one to them. But I can see about inserting, and I don't think it would hurt, Dave. I think that's a great idea to insert a fee schedule into the town report. I'm just saying that's a that's a that's something that probably is read by more people than you think. Sure, that's a great idea. I I think that's a great idea. I'm sure we have an extra page because we haven't heard from a couple people, so that's fine. Thank you. So, did anybody else have any changes on the year in review? No, but Thomas has his hand up. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see it. Sorry. You're still on mute, Tom, uh, Thomas. Thomas, we can't hear you. You're on mute. No. Uh, I think what happened, he may have signed in. and. OK. We can't hear you. I just, um, let me unmute. <clears throat> Okay. No. Now you muted him. My, my guess is, you know the step when you come in and it gives you the uh, step to do your computer audio? Okay, try again. Just leave and come back. Right. Like, go out and come back and make sure you hit the button that says um, computer audio. They did, oh, there you go. We're learning. I know. Sometimes. It out. <clears throat> I had a, Teresa, I had a few things, but I'll just email them to you. Okay, good. Um, nothing major, just. No, and I haven't, like I said, I forgot about the budget. Um, I thought I was done until just now. I don't think I did that budget piece. If I did, I don't remember doing it. Um, hang on, let me admit Leonard back in. Here we go. There we go. Should be coming back in now. Yeah, my guess is he didn't connect his computer audio, which is like what happened to Dave one time there, I think. Now he'll have to unmute. Do you have anything plugged into your computer? Sometimes if you have like headphones plugged in or something like that, it can. Hear me now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. That was on my end. Uh, I had something turned off. That's okay. So, you know, I, just said, I just said you just look on the website for the uh, Bethel Waste, uh, World and Waste, uh, Waste website. There's nothing on there that says anything about pricing at all or changes. And then there's a link and we went to the link where it supposedly it talks about prices and there's nothing on there either. I'm on which website? This, it's the... Uh, oh, we're on the Bethel Royalty Transfer Station. Oh, okay. And yeah, there's, there doesn't seem to be anything there. All right, I'll check and see. I don't know why it's not on the Bethel Royalty Transfer Station website. I know Kelly put it on ours. Um, it says about well, last time because I wanted to see if that was uh, if that was on there. It's on the White the White River Alliance website. Okay. Why would we be on the White River Alliance? 
Yeah, we'll That's take a look. Is. is the other website uh, an active website, Therese? I have no idea. I don't know. I mean, I have no idea. The way I just wonder if maybe, you know, maybe it's not an active one anymore. It doesn't take you to anything. So, so it put there from the Bethel Royalty Transfer Station, it doesn't take you to anything. Hmm. Huh. It does. I actually just followed all the links through the website. Um, Go in there for us. Let me see if I can retrace what I did. So, 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 so we'll which one did you go through, Lindley? So if you go um, Town of Bethel website, Bethel Royalton Solid Waste Program, and then you have to click the link. It's under Jen Bartleman's name. It's the White River Valley or White River Alliance Solid Waste. So right. go into that takes you to the their website and then under about us there's a price list and then on that page you have to click the pdf link so it's like 100 so clicks in you see when you go when you go to town the bethel town website and then so under uh services that drop down list yeah there's the the bethel royalton solid waste program and then on that page under jen bartleman's name there's a link to the white river alliance You have to dig for this. We're going to make it work so. for it. Yeah, it's, kind of, it's kind of difficult to find. <laughs> the only question I have is, hmm. along with sort of what Dave was saying, can it be more prominent? The changes, can it be in a space where people can see that they have to, that there are changes? Something that says that instead of digging for the changes, because there's nothing up front that says fees and things have been changed. Do you know, do yeah. you know what I'm getting at? Yeah, I don't know who maintains her website. I think she pays somebody to do it. I'll have to ask Jen, um, and I'll take a look at it tomorrow at the office, but I'll ask um, Jen about that. Yeah, because you shouldn't have to dig for it, and I'll have to ask Kelly to make sure it's more front and center on ours. And maybe it could just be as simple as Kelly links the, you know, up at the top of our pages piece of White River Valley, or, you know, Bethel Royalton Transfer Station, just to say updated pricing list and link right to that PDF yeah. on the front page so then you're not digging. <clears throat> that's probably the easiest. Yeah, that's what I'll have her do um, for price increase. Okay, sure. Yeah, I'm not sure who updates Jen's. Uh, Rob Fish, maybe? I don't know. She was having trouble with that guy, so I don't know who he is. We'll figure it out. But thank you. So I'll make sure that Jen and Kelly make some changes. Okay. So anything else, anything further on the town meeting warning or informational hearing? No. Nope. Agenda? I, I might have misunderstood, but you said the budget and stuff is going to rephrase this right. With the informational meeting, is everything set prior to the informational meeting or does it get set after the information? It's set prior to the informational meeting. So basically what we're going to do is discuss the budget, how we got there, what the numbers are. Um, normally at a regular town meeting, we would be voting on the budget from the floor. But this year, because of COVID, we're going to be voting the budget Australian ballot. So these are informational meetings. And so we'll just be talking about the budget. It's really a less than 2% increase over last year. And, um, but we can talk about any line item that we want and hopefully be able to explain that to people. And So devil's advocate, if it's voted down, what happens with the budget? I go back to the drawing room. And the, the stinky thing is about, that's the, the really the, the thing that stinks about voting Australian ballot, your budget, we will have no understanding as to why it didn't pass right. so we won't know if people thought it was too low too high we missed something so what we would do is i would go back take a look at it and then but actually what i would do is ask for probably do another public meeting and try yeah. to get some input to figure it out and then we would make another stab at it but um well, you probably get some uh, um inclination of that at the informational meetings i would think i would think possibly so. i would think so i mean i feel like you know once people read the town report and see the budget and see the notes on the budget that people will feel pretty good about about the budget i 
you know, um, I feel like it's a good budget going through this year and I feel good about it. If I was a school, I wasn't feel confident putting their budget forward, but I feel good about ours. <laughs> so, uh, um, but hopefully we answer all those questions at the informational and once I draft the budget report and have Chris look it over, we'll put that out on, you know, from porch forum and stuff and Facebook and let people, you know, see that. And hopefully that will also increase attendance at the informational meetings. And that's always the challenge with, you know, the virtual um, informational meetings versus in person is, you know, we know that in person, you know, there's on average 200 um, citizens of the town that are there to discuss it. Um, an informational meeting, if I had to bet, you probably want more than 10. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Now, I would say if there was something egregious that, you know, there would be a member of, <clears throat> of the community yeah. that would attend something, uh, yeah. talk about that, but uh, just kind of, kind of a different way of doing these things. Exactly. So. You'll see the same thing that we had down to the transfer station. I didn't know about it. Oh. I didn't see anything <laughs> on it. You're probably right. But through this process of the the two informational meetings, you know, we'll again just like it's drawn out here, we'll we'll go through the whole warning of what everybody's voting for and why. Um, and then like when we get to the budget, we'll go into the budget, you know, um, highlight any of the maybe major changes and, 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 and how that affects us. You know, mm -hmm. um, I, I remember, you know, 15 years ago when I got here, I used to always ask every year, how many pennies is that going up? And nobody could tell me, you know? So, I mean, but, um, you know, we'll know how much, how much does that affect you? You know, two pennies on, on the tax rate. What does that mean? Um, okay. So we'll definitely uh, what changed yeah yeah because we can share a screen so we can also put out you know we're doing the meeting share the screen sure. of those changes but we'll also try to get some links out and some information on front porch forum once that's done so people will have an idea of what's happening right anything further with that item are we good and I, and I would just say, uh, board members, if there's anything that comes up afterwards in regards to the write-up, the year in review write-up, just send those that information to Therese. Therese, when would you need that by? Well, it'd be nice tomorrow to have it because I need to get this thing done okay. Tuesday and it's going out Friday. And so it'd be nice to have it tomorrow. But you all okay. have to come sign stuff tomorrow anyways, the warning and the... Um, certificate of highway mileage so yeah okay i guess you know that would be the thing is we should get a motion to ex to um to accept the town meeting warning no move second okay all in favor aye all right Uh, town manager's report. Is there anything that we haven't gone through, Therese, that's on your report? Yes. So I forgot to tell you, I don't know why, at our last meeting, that Oscar was in an accident and I just got the insurance report today and he totaled the cruiser. Um, luckily, he was not injured. That's the most important thing. Um, he was uh, working for Royalton. Um, but was driving our cruiser. He was doing part of the DUI occupant protection, I believe, um, program patrolling. So uh, Royalton PD is gonna pay the deductible and uh, underwriting, we also have the same insurance company. So underwriting is going to talk to each other, let us know if we should have some agreement, but I just got the settlement number today. So we'll definitely be able to buy what they gave us the value of this cruiser was more than we paid for the other one. So we'll have to start looking for a new cruiser. Um, in the meantime, he's going to be just using his truck and he's provided me with his proof of insurance and um, we've worked that out. So also um, I spoke with Carol Ketchum, uh, the chair of the Rolving Loan Fund regarding interest on deferred loans that we talked about last meeting. 
And he said he didn't waive any interest. So I just extended the amortization schedules and I mailed those to both parties, the letters and telling them what that would be. I put those out last week. So um, that was good. I'm working on the horrific uh, 2015 hazard mitigation plan. I um, made it through all 50 pages today, but oh my God, there's so much data in there. Fire structures, hazmat spills going back a long way, weather patterns. And I did reach out for someone at the state today to help me with the weather pattern stuff. Um, so apparently when the select board adopted it in 2015, you had agreed to up to look at it every year when you did your local emergency management plan or after any incident, which you did neither. So we're, we're, and it has to be done. If we don't get it to FEMA and adopted, we lose our 12.5 ERAF and we go up to 25%. So I actually worked for my house today so that no one would bother me. And I got through all 50 pages. Um, I still need to add some data and then we're going to have to start holding meetings, the emergency management committee. Um, I've already put it in two rivers newsletter. And, um, and so we'll start going through holding some meetings. We'll include it in our select board meetings and try to get it to FEMA um, before it expires. Um, so that we don't, it's critical that we don't lose our ERAF. So working on that, um, I have another meeting this week about the Bethel Connections grant. So I will let you know <clears throat> what we're going to do there. Okay. So I think that's everything that was in my report. That's good. That I didn't tell you, that I needed to tell you about. Yeah. All right, here. And we had some meeting minutes there. I think there was just one set of meeting minutes in there. It was the select board minutes. Yeah, there was minutes from the Equity and Inclusion Committee. Yep. Um, there it is. That. Yep. That was it. And select board meeting minutes from the 28th of December. Anybody have any comments on those? Are we good to approve them as written? So moved. Second. Okay, second. Paul, all in favor? Aye. Okay. Lindley? Uh, so, um, Therese might already be aware that there's a, a group of folks in town who have been tossing around the idea of still holding some sort of virtual social gathering on town meeting day and kind of calling it the untown meeting. And it's not at all intended to supplant town meeting or even really be about the, you know, the actual discussions uh, that we would normally have on town meeting day, but we didn't want to go forward with the idea if the select board had any issues with it or felt like it was sort of undermining the fact that the select board can't be hosting the meeting. Um, so really more, more informal and sort of trying to retain the social piece of town meeting. And then one of the thoughts was to invite um, different town committees to Kind of present just like they would with the tables out by the pie kind of a, a venue for them to say hey here's what we've been working on here's what we'll be working on this coming year maybe get new interests or new members things like that so um yeah i just wanted to put it out there to you guys and see if there was any any issue or reason we should not push forward with it uh before we go starting to do that are you going to serve virtual pie <laughs> we're actually discussing how to do pie i have a really good idea. I just, I haven't gotten all the players involved yet, but it is, it is in our thoughts. <laughs> Fly it in with drones. 
Is this going to comply with all COVID regulations? Well, it's, it's going to be entirely virtual. Oh, virtual. Yeah. Okay. As long as people are aware when the polls are open, you know, so that they're not, you know, that they know that they're, you know, they're voting and whatever. And, um, you know, I guess as if it's something you can participate in, that's great because it would be nice to know, you know, what people are talking about as far as. <coughs> I don't know how you're going to structure it or whatever, but. Well, so the, the loose idea, I mean, this is still in the works, but the loose idea um, would be that the, there'd be sort of a, a chunk of the meeting that would be about uh, committees and different groups to give, you know, give them a little bit of a, a chance to talk and give people what they're doing and then um, actually have it structured in a little bit of a way of like speed dating, but um, you can do this with Zoom breakout rooms where you do like these speed networking type things. And so it would be a get to meet your neighbor and there'd be a series of questions. So you'd get plopped into a room with three to six random people that maybe you know, maybe you don't know. You'd all introduce yourselves. You'd have to answer a certain set of questions. You'd have a time frame, and then you'd be sent into another room. So it's just a way to meet other people, have a little bit of fun and engaging conversation and kind of catch up on what social and kind of committee endeavors are happening around town. That's the a great pie, idea. The pie piece, so this is this is my idea was to, um, if we can get it sponsored, which we think we can, is to hire a local baker to do either individual pies or slices of pie to go. And then when you go vote, you get your slice of pie. So you have to go vote to get your slice of pie. That's a great idea. So that's sort of where we are with the thinking, but we didn't want to push it out unless everybody was on board and felt comfortable that's, with it. That's a great idea. Yeah, people might donate baked goods too, you know, like they normally do for um, town meeting. Yeah, that was sort of our thought was, the only issue with that is making sure everything's COVID safe. We were kind of thinking if we can get somebody who we know is a is a baker, is serve safe certified, all of that, then we're not- Oh, that's true, yeah, because then you're gonna want need to make sure that it goes to the right person that, so there's that. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. That'll be fun. Uh, just ask one question. Are those ballots uh, being mailed out or are, uh, are people picking them up? You will have your normal choices, which are you will either go to the polls and vote, which will be COVID safe. Everybody's going to have a mask on just like they were the other one. Or you will um, call the town clerk's office and you will request one directly from the town clerk. We're not going to do a mass mailing. Okay. So any issues or questions from the board? I think it's great if you figure it out, let us know if you want us to publish the meeting or anything, just let us know. Cool. Well. Yeah, hopefully it'll be at a time when we're not, you know, working with polls or counting votes or whatever. So we'd be able to look in on it too. All right. Anything else to come before the board this evening? Oh, um, I forgot to wish you a happy birthday, Chris. A happy birthday. <laughs> well, well, I spent three and a half hours of it sitting at DMV this morning. So. <laughs> oh, boy. You couldn't ask for a better birthday present than that. <laughs> you can do that online, Chris. <laughs> I had an appointment at 10 o'clock, and I got there, and they said, no, we don't show that you have an appointment, but if you go wait outside, we'll we'll get you in. And two hours later, I said, uh, am I getting in today? And they're like, we'll get you in once you sit in the lobby now. So now I sat in the lobby. And about an hour and a half later, they got me in. So I was like, oh, It's because they fun. forgot about you for the first <laughs> hours you were in the parking lot. <laughs> oh, nice. Nothing like being made feel special on your birthday. <laughs> so heads up, if you have to go to the DMV, like get that appointment like months ahead of time because they are booked. Oh, I renewed my license today. <laughs> well in advance of when it needs to be. Yeah, uh, so, oh, boy. yeah, it's definitely different. <laughs> so, Teresa, I had one question on the budget uh, information that oh, we have. Yep, sorry. Uh, in the water fund. Yep. Um, the salaries and overtime. Yep. A, a coding issue, maybe, or is that really? Yeah, to, uh, I see it there now. I'll have to ask. 
Dietrich, just to make sure that um, Tim and Richard's salaries are going in correctly. Yeah, it doesn't look like uh, it's quite right. Yeah, the overtime could be right, um, just because, um, you know, Richard gets works eight hours of overtime every pay period because he works seven days a week. So Saturday, Sunday, or two hours every week. But, uh, and then he was doing some overtime during the project. He actually helped do some, um, we needed to, to do temporary water. So he did that, but yeah, that is low. Um, now that I look, I look at it again, I'll ask um, Dietrich because there's a percentage of Tim's salary that goes there and there's a percentage of Richard's. So I should all look and see, make sure that um, CompuCount has the right percentages. Okay. Yeah, thank you. I'll take the. All right. Good. Anything else? All right. So we are now. Um, I just need a motion to go into executive what? session and. We got to talk about it first. Sorry, there's that's the funny thing about the state rule where it says, okay, so two topics to be discussed and one's regarding a contract negotiation with Casella and the other a legal matter of pending or probable civil litigation regarding property rights uh, where I have some confidential attorney advice to deliver to the board and any decisions we made in open session. The thing about the open meeting law is they want you, it, it, it's kind of ridiculous in one extent because they want you to have a conversation in open session that lets them know that you have really determined that premature general public knowledge regarding whatever the topic is, is apparent before you go into executive session. So that's why it's set up in this two part vote. So the first part, when it says that we have a motion to find that premature general public knowledge regarding the contract negotiation with Casella and, and this other matter would clearly place the town at a disadvantage because you risk disclosing your negotiation style, uh, strategy on both issues. It's, it's very cumbersome because it has to be two separate motions. And I really don't know how we can have this great discussion about it in open session without giving away too much information. Obviously we're trying, we may negotiate something with Casella. So obviously we can't put that out in the public because we don't want them to know what we think. So there's that. Then the other is some possible civil litigation. And so the same thing, there's a strategy there that we need to deal with a landowner and we don't want him or his lawyer to know what we're thinking either. So I just kind of want to take the opportunity. We don't see this very often. And I wanted you to know that's why it's a two-part um, motion. It's not because I was bored. Uh, it, it actually adheres to the statute. And, uh, and, and as much as it's cumbersome, it, this is the way it works or why it is. So just I thought think, I should tell you. I think also you didn't even have to mention who we had a contract with. Actually, I, don't think have to, I don't think you have to mention that name. Well, when they sample that they give you, they advise you to. If you can say it's with ABC company or whatever, they actually advise you to do that because, mm -hmm. of course, as you know, Dave, some ta somebody sued a town. I was going to say, if people dig hard enough, they'll know what you're doing. I know. I know. It's true. I just am trying to follow the, of course, the rule. But, but anyway, so I just wanted you to know, normally we go in and it's a one motion deal. This is why it's two. But it's, it's not... It's not 100% decided that the negotiations will be through just one contractor either. Right, exactly. It hasn't been determined, so. Right, but that's just the wording. So, and that's what they want you to do is have this discussion about premature public knowledge. And so it becomes a two motion thing to get into executive session, but I just thought you should know why it was there. Okay, so we just need a motion to the last sentence is that correct Therese? so it's still a two-part nope you need both i just read part of it but <laughs> so uh, do we have to read it all out again 
I um, I can. I'm always so you need to well, make that motion. To all right, I'll, I'll make a motion to find the premature general public knowledge regarding contract negotiation with Casella and a separate pending probable legal matter regarding property rights would clearly place the town at a disadvantage because the select board risks disclosing its negotiation strategy on both issues. If it is discussed, oh, if it discusses the contract terms in public session. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so we'll be closing okay, up. Well, hold, hang on just a second. Is it, was it Mo who did the first motion? Paul and Lindley. Paul and Lindley, okay. I didn't yeah. hear. The second motion hasn't been made yet. Oh uh, yeah, no, I know that one. I just want to make sure I got the yep. motion in the second correctly. Yes, I move that we go into executive session. For, uh, for what we already, <laughs> <laughs> For all that stuff we just said. There you go. Second. Okay. Okay, all in favor? Aye. So we'll be going to executive session. Um, so there won't be, I don't believe there'll be anything that will be uh, decided. So we won't okay. be back in public session to decide anything. I'll give all, um, well, I'll just add the ending, Lisa, the okay. time later. Sounds good. Have a good night, Lisa. Good night. Good night. Bye, Doug. Bye. Have a good night and happy birthday, Chris. Thanks, Doug.